Hey guys, Colby here. Welcome back to another video. This will be a recap of two things that I missed covering because I was away. I'll give you guys my own thoughts and opinions. And of course, I know other creators have covered these two things as well. So the fusion and the new boss that is coming for the city of Centranos, right? Um, I know other creators have covered it, but I'm going to give you guys my own thoughts and opinions and what I do think on both of the of these new announcements that uh, Plyrum has given over the weekend the new fusion is starting this thursday so it will be at the same time as other events for tournament and i hope they make them so that you get both the points for tournament and the new uh fusion call uh, with the name of uh blizzard blizzard the howler so um in terms of the tournament fusion guys i'm not gonna be getting it there's unlike there's an unlikely you know possibility that i do this i've missed too many events uh, like a summoning event and then this summoning event feels like I'll need to spend too much of my resources to get it and uh, since I've already missed a couple of farming tournaments as well I might call it just for the the void maybe the primal as well and uh, yeah consider this like a, like a loss if I wasn't away this week and last week I would have been able to do it but I'm back now I should be able to give you guys uh, you know my full attention for for the remaining of the month all right let's get started with uh blizzard there we go blizzard all right gonna be starting as a fusion on the 14th probably gonna go for like two weeks and the idea by plyum is that this guy will be very good for one of the areas in the game where we all have trouble with and it's the fire knight the hard mode so we need the freeze uh to be applied so what does this guy do that it's so special as as plyum advertises it right blizzard Tax three times at random. Each hit has a 40% chance to place a freeze for one turn. So that goes with the legendary books goes to a 50% chance. So 50-50 chance to get a freeze going on your A1 is not ideal. It's not as good as Newt, obviously. And we, we already see that for Newt, it's already a problem in case you get like a resist out of the three hits, which are guaranteed. But imagine if you get 50% chance, 50% chance, 50% chance, the freeze not even landing, you're... Decrease in terminator will be, you know, gone. And just by this, I can compare other heroes available in the game right now, other champions available in the game right now that could offer similar result results or even better results. One of them is this epic called Neldor, who can also hit with a 40% chance to freeze. It's basically the same thing, but has a better passive. So whenever an ally places a freeze, this champion has a 30% chance to attack the target with the default skill. So this on top with this makes it so that Neldor is able to apply um, basically more freezes and he also has a decreased speed that can be applied on the boss which improves his utility overall as a fire knight champion so um, I'm already seeing you know some problems with the new fusion that is coming in terms of just the A1 okay I know not many people will have this guy uh, just an epic that is just randomly in order to acquire it so I do understand maybe the opinion, maybe maybe having both could be a thing. And then um, I could compare it with other stuff like the barbarians here. If you we check on your Carl is a void that we can all get through the clan shop slowly, but surely we can get him. And he does also have a 50% chance to freeze. All right. With double hit here, he also has a decrease speed and he also has another freeze on his AOE ability. So not only he can help push with the waves he can also do some solid freezes and i would say that he's an a, a very solid alternative that can work in all affinities for pushing the fire knight so having that in mind uh, we already see some alternatives and the possibility to even skip um, blizzard but let's go and continue on with the other stuff that this uh champion has so removes any stun sleep fear true fear freeze provoke and petrification debuffs from all allies uh, and then also places an increased defense and an ally protection um, on all allies except this champion for two turns. So the problem with this is that this could have been just a simple cleanse, right? Um, I do like that it removes petrification. I believe um, you cannot remove petrification, but I might be mistaken. Uh, we can definitely check it in the game right now. If we go to um, to any, cha any champion skills. And we click on any champion that has a debuff, I believe. We click here and we check on petrification. You can actually see on whether um, this can be removed. 
Yeah, except for the remove debuff effect. So yes, you can cleanse petrification with other cleanses. So already this cleanse feels like um, it's an okay cleanse. It's not an amazing cleanse. It's good for very specific situations. But if you guys consider that the Fire Knight on hard will be applying a very strong debuff on your team. All right, if we click here, we click on uh, his skills, you'll see that he applies. If he manages to hit you, you don't, you don't manage to just keep the Terminator down. He applies a decrease speed, right? Decrease speed can be very annoying. It decreases your speed by a tremendous amount, especially if you're running like 250. Reduce that by 30%, you're losing at least, you know, uh, what? 75 speed, which is quite insane. So already a little bit of a problem with the A2 as well. And then um, if we check on the remaining uh, skill called Spike Blizzard, attacks all enemies, 75% chance to place a freeze. That goes to 100%, also has a 75% chance of decreasing Terminator by 30%. So that's good for controlling waves. Overall, I do like this. And then um, even with the four turn cooldown and then Abominable Snowgrin, Passive effect, whenever an enemy tries to place a freeze on this champion, instantly transfers it from this champion to that enemy. Active effect, whenever this champion is killed, revives them with 30% HP and 30% Terminator. And plays a revive on death uh, buff on them for one turn. So it's pretty cool. He does have an ability to recover in, in, in the case that he dies. Because remember, he's going to be ally protecting your team. Overall, this guy feels like he's a very strong support, okay? Very strong support because of the increased defense, ally protection, the freezes. They are, freeze is a support skill. It's a control skill. So it helps you survive longer. The longer uh, the enemies are controlled, the better it is for your own team. I don't think that this guy will help you push for Fire Knight 10. But lower difficulties of the Fire Knight on hard mode will be possible because of this guy's freezes. And the support also adds up. The Fire Knight in lower difficulties has um, much slower speeds than on 10. So it is possible you use Blizzard the Howler instead. You can do even difficulty one on hard mode. If you can do that and keep the Terminator low with other free champions, of course, this guy will not be enough. Then you should be able to have that small chance to get the, the mythical, right? As long as the runs are not extremely long, I would suggest, you know, trying to push for hard. But um, will this champion be the only one needed to push for Fire Knight Heart? No. Um, will I be going for this guy? Yes, I will be going for this guy because it's going to be the Christmas Fusion. I'll be around. I'll be doing some summons with the shards that I'll be slowly accumulating. And that will be, that will be basically it for uh, 2023, the last Fusion of the year. A little bit under underwhelming, but we did have some good Fusions overall throughout the year. Um, just to name a few, Emic, Fragment Collections, and, and Fusions. I I'll, I'll recall them as the same. Um, Emic and Newt, both were fantastic in terms of the overall utility. Unfortunately, newer players will not have them, but I know that the majority of the player base, at least that is watching my channel, is um, veteran, at least a year-long player, okay? So let's continue on with the next part, which is the big skills that um, the new boss has, Amuse. All right, let's open up this. When I read this, I was like, oh my God, this is so confusing. It will take us some time to get used to this boss, but it is my understanding that there will be strategies to beat this boss. Just to give you guys an overall idea from what I got from this guy is that he'll be changing forms depending on whether he has the Eclipse buff on him. Okay, when the Eclipse buff is available on him, um, he, he will be able to, to push and go for the other form and he, he'll basically revive, all right? Revive when he does have the Eclipse buff. Um, in terms of damage, you'll be able to do 5% uh, of the boss's health with your attacks that do enemy max health damage. So even Newt will not be able to take this guy down. He'll be doing 5, 5, 5% 5 damage, uh, which is still nice. This guy overall will be cleansing and applying different buffs and debuffs throughout with his skills. So I do think he will be challenging, but I still don't know how challenging he will be when the time comes. He's like a mythical champion, basically a mythical boss with two forms, the Lunar, um, Archon, I guess, is going to be the one form, but I'm not sure what they would call the other one. He basically looks the same, but his name is Ami's the Lunar Archon, but I don't know which one is the Lunar version and which one is... Is it considered as a one? Not sure. Anyway, uh, let's read through the skills in case you guys uh, want to cover this again. Tax all enemies with the A1, pretty cool. 
Increase the damage inflicted by this skill by 10% for each buff on Amius. Yeah, so you gotta be removing the buffs uh, from him. Also heals him for 100% of damage dealt. Crazy. Tax a lot of enemies on the A2 as well. Before attacking, increase the duration of all buffs. Decrease the debuffs. Heals Amius by 20% of his max health. That is insane. So you will need a um, reduction of healing debuff on him. I don't think you, you'll be able to do enough damage for him to not have that debuff. But um, then we continue on, removes any block buff, debuffs from Amius and replaces them with block debuffs buff. That is very strong. Also removes any debuffs negatively affecting stats and it replaces them with a mirrored buff equivalent. So decrease attack, he'll get increased attack. Q reduction, he'll get continuous heal and strengthen uh, if you've got the weekend on. And then places a stun debuff on all enemies except mythical champions for one turn. So that's crazy. And forces all mythical champions to change form. That is cool, by the way. Uh, to force all mythical champions to change form. Uh, whenever an enemy is healed, Amius also heals by 25% of the value of the original heal. That is crazy. And he'll be also healing again with the shield buffs and just be a very annoying boss to deal with. The second passive right there, uh, the active effect at the start of Amius' turn places an Eclipse buff. That's what I've mentioned before. This cannot be removed. And uh, when he transfers back into his base form, um, that's when uh, the skill will go on cooldown. It's a four turn cooldown basically, which dictates when he's changing forms from what I understood. Passive effect is the revivability that he will have when he has the Eclipse buff. I'm not sure how easy this guy will be to auto, by the way. Uh, damage from skills, yeah, reduced to 5%. Immune to stun, freeze, sleep, provoke. Block active skills, block passive skills, fear, true fear, petrification. Also immune to HP exchange effects, HP balancing effects, and cooldown increasing effects. So, the only problem that I have with this is that the boss, basically so far from what I understood, the boss can be Terminator controlled, okay? Seems like an easy solution, really, to be Terminator controlled. But again, if you kill him under the Eclipse buff, he'll revive with a lot of Terminator. So you will need a ton of Terminator control in order to control him even after his revive, all right? Um, but let's continue on and see. So attacks by an enemy two times will ignore 100% of the target's defense. Damage increases by 20% for each debuff on the enemy. Oof, that will be nasty. Decreases Amius, ignore defense for each awakening level, right? This makes it seem uh, much easier. If this attack kills an enemy, instantly activates Amius' mani maniacal bedlam skill, which is this one. Uh, but the A2, Blood Moon, before attacking, increase the duration of debuffs and decrease the duration of all buffs on all enemies. Increase damage inflicted by 5% of the target's max HP for each enemy buff that has the duration and decreased. Ooh, very nasty form, basically. He does more damage based on the buffs that you have. Um, so, also decrease each enemy's terminator. So, you'll be decreasing terminator as well for each awakening level. So, uh, you'll be able to recover a little bit of that terminator. So interesting removes any block any block debuffs buffs from enemies and replaces them with both block buffs it's kind of the same thing here um as here in terms of the changing of the buffs then place a sleep debuff on all enemies so instead of a stun this debuff cannot be blocked or resisted also forces all mythical champions to change form again uh crazy uh, finally feels amius terminated by 10 percent for each buff converted into a debuff Reduces the amount of healing on enemies um, when enemies is under the Eclipse buff. Ignores shield, block damage, and killable. Finally, whenever an enemy's cooldown is de decreased by an artifact, instantly activates Amu's Abyssal Construct. Ah, that is crazy. Abyssal Construct it is A1. So if you have anything that reduces cooldowns, or, or um, it doesn't say from a champion, artifact, accessory, mastery, or skill, Oh, or skill. Okay, yeah, that's from champions. Instantly activates that. That is scary. Damage from skills that scale based on enemies' max HP is again uh, at 5%. Um, yeah, he can be Terminator controlled. And then again, awakenings affect the, the damage he takes. Basically, the whole idea, I think, with this guy is to have a heal reduction on him. And then also have term to control basically those two things i think is going to be needed to beat this guy but depending on the stats that he's needed to be beaten like speed um and the amount of accuracy it all will depend 
He seems like to be like the big final boss that we'll be encountering in there. The other bosses will be bosses that we fought so far and they'll be together. So that will be like a, a whole different way of feeling like an encounter. But again, this guy will be interesting on, on how many different ways we'll be able to find other than decrease Terminator to beat him. Um, and of course, all depends on the rewards as well. So, guys, this was the video just catching up on everything, uh, really. I'm a little bit sick, um, so I'll, I'll still try to make the videos as usual, daily content updates, plus other strategies and guides as I usually do on the channel. Thank you all so much for the support, and I will see you in the next one. See ya!